Hi guys, so welcome to week eight. This week you'll be working on um, finishing up all your projects from first quarter, making sure that those are submitted in Canvas. If you are done with all of that, you can start working on an independent uh, piece, which would be the first thing that we'll be doing in the second quarter. But I also wanted to show you um, this week, and we'll talk about this in class, but I wanted to put it online as well. Um, one of the things that's available to you in um, AP Central. So if you haven't gone to AP Central since you logged into the class or signed up for the class, now might be a good time to look at what's there because they have some things to help give you an idea about what kind of work is being um, submitted around the country and what um, uh, is possible at your level. So what I've done in here is I've gone into the um, AP website and I've gone to courses and exams and it might look a little different on your screen because I'm in the teacher um, section so I went to students so that it looked a little bit more like yours but if we go down to where it says art there's AP art and design program and we can go to that page and then in that page um, it'll say um, here's an overview of the um, portfolios so let's say we go to AP um, uh, 2D um, and uh, it asks us about the kinds of um, uh, uh, things that are required. And then there's like some course content here. And then if you keep scrolling down, um, you will find... Oh, I might have gone past it. This is what Joey and I were going through. Um, that there are lots of resources here, but one of them is the samples. There's the due date. Oh, here, about the portfolio. And... If I scroll down, um, it'll tell me about the um, sustained investigation and the selected work, but here it says design sample portfolios and scoring from the 2020 exam. So if I click on that, then you can see in my um, uh, page, it gives me examples of scores of one, scores of five, you know, in between. I don't think it's on the students thing, so I might have crossed over here. But let's just look here because you will have this scoring information. 2D selected work samples and scoring commentaries and sustained investigation uh, commentaries. So if I click here, it's going to bring me to this page, and here is actual work that was submitted last year. And you can see that this student has done some work with fabric and um, embroidery um, and some printmaking, collaging. And you'll see here, these are the three things you're going to have to write when you uh, submit your portfolio. You're going to write about the ideas, the materials, and the processes for each one of your pieces. And she has said, and I assume it's a she, but I could be wrong there, exploring my personal family history using heirloom fabrics and religious iconography. I'm using fabric, thread, and ink. And I'm using applique, machine embroidery, and printmaking on this piece. Now I'm going to scroll down so you can see some others. These look like they're small on the small side because you can see the individual threads that are there. But they're nicely organized in terms of how she puts things in certain spots to create balanced, unified compositions. And then here's the nice thing is that underneath that they have commentary about why they gave her the score that they did. Now, in the selected works, you get a holistic score, a score um, uh, one through five. When we talk about the new rubric a little bit later, you'll, we'll talk in more in depth about the, the sustained investigation rubric. But you can see here that they've given the student a five. Um, 
So why, they say, the visual evidence in these works demonstrate advanced 2D design skills, design elements, and principles are used to guide decision in the use of line, color, texture that enrich the surface of each composition. And it continues there. So it talks about some keywords like principles and elements. It down here says unity and contrast patterns. So it's mentioning some things that are on the posters in our room that describe elements and principles of design. So you can see that that's something that they're uh, aware of. Then they talk about materials, processes, and ideas. These pieces display advanced visual relationships through the use of materials and process, which also express the student's idea about family history and tradition. The key materials in each work Fabrics that had belonged to the family members are deeply tied to the core ideas that student is exploring. So what does that mean? That means that simply by using the word heirloom fabrics instead of just fabric glue and um, embroidery thread, she's uh, communicated that these this the material that she selected has something to do with the person and something to do with her exploration of that person. So her materials have inherently connect some kind of connection to the imagery and the idea that she's trying to pursue. That idea is what they refer to as synthesis, where your materials or your selection of materials has something to do with your ideas. So she gets bonus points for that just by using that word heirloom fabric. So we wanna start thinking about our choice of materials not overthinking where we get in our own way and you say, well, why did you choose paint? And it's like, well, because I like paint. That's a perfectly legitimate reason to pick something. But maybe you do think a little bit beyond that and say, well, I could pick something in addition to paint that I could include that would start to get my work to the level of the kinds of things that this artist is doing. Lastly, they have a little commentary about the writing. and. It says, although the descriptions are somewhat general, the student has identified materials, processes, and ideas for each work, letting the viewer know that the intent across all five pieces was exploring my personal family history using heirloom fabulous in religious iconography. Yeah. So if we went back up, we could see there is not a ton of room for you to write about any one piece, but she could have written more. Um, like, one thing that she didn't mention is why printmaking for these things. And she could say that, you know, I used print so that I could quickly um, recreate imagery and therefore move it and experiment with it, which would hit on the idea of analysis and um, uh, um, revision. That is something that's important to them as well. So our writing, our choice of words, our choice of materials, and um, our choice of processes are all things that they're looking for here when they're giving you this holistic score. So there's more here too with other portfolios. So here's a painting one that you can look at more closely and you can see this is pretty impressive work, right? Um, so pretty easy to understand why this one might get a higher score, whereas the first one I think is a good one for you guys to look at. Here's a photography portfolio um, at the uh, um, you can look at more closely. And what we mentioned in class is that if you look at this, you can see that the use of color in all these photographs is um, selective, that it's black and white with little pops of red. And that's something you might want to start thinking about in terms of uh, your sustained investigation. If there's a color that runs throughout all of your work, then it kind of unifies it. And when they see all the pieces at once, which is the first thing that they do before they click on individual ones to look at um, the individual pieces, it'll unify your whole portfolio, make it look a little bit more professional. So we won't go into what they wrote about each person. This is an oil pastel, and we can see that the color is different in these, and that that isn't necessarily bad, but that it's a little different approach, and that that might be something that this person could think about um, a little bit more. And here's a photography portfolio, which looks pretty good, pretty standard. Interest in light and shadow and shape, repetition. We think, well, these are pretty good, but look, this person got a score of three. So um, 
a little digging here, you'll get start to get an idea about what the competition looks like because you will be scored based on not just what you do, but what other students your age are doing around the country. And a little bit of insight in the thinking of what um, the people who are scoring your work are looking for. So I will, at this point, stop this recording and escape out of this. Um, and um, look forward to um, grading all your work.